Here is another one of those fascinating and exhilarating videos about home construction repairs that I strongly suggest people watch before they start adding different uh, beams, making their floor crawl space girder beams a little larger if they don't have enough room already for their uh, minimum distances or a little smaller than 18 inches or 12 inches. And uh, hopefully by the time you are done watching this video, you will know exactly what in the heck I'm talking about. So let's go ahead and get started. In this example, we have a stem wall that is 1 foot 6 inches, 18 inches from the top of the concrete to the bottom or the top of the soil underneath the crawl space to the top of the stem wall. And 19 and a half inches from the bottom of the joist to the top of the soil. Now most building codes require that 18 inches be the minimum. Now the reason why this is a little larger is because we are using a larger girder beam. Now the building codes also allow for the girder beams to have a 1 foot or a 12 inch distance from the top of the soil to the bottom of the girder. Now, the reason why I think that is, is because they want the people who need to get underneath the house to make repairs. Uh, they want to give them a little more room in the larger areas, but the 12 inches gives them enough room to crawl under something, but not, uh, you know, be confined as much. If this was all 12 inches, then this probably isn't going to give you much room to work. So that's my thought about that. Feel free to share your comments with us on your reasons if they vary or even if you want to do what some people do and that is simply point out something I already said in my video in the comment area. Feel free to do that. That happens every once in a while. So the first suggestion I would like to make before you replace a girder beam with a larger one if you are not going to have this distance. You know, if I replace this with a larger one, I'm going to have less than 12 inches and my building inspector will not be happy. But an additional concrete footing in the center of the beam to reduce the structural load that it's going to be carrying might actually make your building inspector happy. So this is one of the repair suggestions I would like to make. Just adding an additional concrete footing with the support post and the appropriate hardware to reduce the load. And something like this, if you have a beam that is uh, maybe it's only sagging a half of an inch, three quarters of an inch, you might be able to cut it in the center. You'd have to make sure that it is supported before you cut it. You don't want the floor caving in. Um, support the beam, um, dig the hole that you need, cut it in half, and then when you put your new support footing in and your post, you could simply raise the um, beam up on each side, and then you could always use uh, wedges or shims to adjust if you needed to compensate in some of these other areas. So that's one repair suggestion. Another would be to use a larger beam in width, not in height. So for example, if I had a 4x8, I might want to use a 6x8 or even an 8x8. And if that's the case, you might need to do some modifications to any of the hardware that is used to make the necessary connections to the floor or the concrete footing. Another suggestion, instead of using wider lumber, a wider beam, would be to use multiple construction standard or LVL boards. And this, of course, becomes uh, really helpful if uh, you can't get larger materials or you have a difficult time moving them underneath or even into the basement. I mean, something like this really can make the difference between you doing a repair yourself and hiring somebody else to do it for you. And of course, this repair would not be complete without suggesting to install additional girder beams with their the appropriate sized concrete footings. And this will definitely make all the difference in the world 
for um, floors that have undersized floor joists, undersized girder beams, and maybe even overspanned lumber or even lumber that's spaced too far apart. And of course, the last example in the video will be actually providing you with an example of what in the heck I'm actually talking about if you didn't really get it for installing a larger girder beam. So for example, if you had a 4x8 and you had the minimum already 12 inch clearance or even a 13 inch clearance and you install a board that's two inches larger so a 4x10 for example then that is going to create a problem for our building inspector and our local building code so this is the main reason why I made the video just to point out that there are other options instead of installing larger beams larger girder beams and uh, reducing the distance here if you have the room knock yourself out by all means put larger beams in um, change out the footings if necessary if you have to and of course you, you can do other types of repairs but for those of you who are dealing with the bare minimum and i would imagine most of us are i have rarely came to a house i mean i have came to houses before that had six inches in between the bottom of the joist and the top of the soil. And there was actually no way to make the repair, I should say that. I remember coming to one house and there was actually, you could see where someone had crawled underneath the house. There was a path where they had uh, crawled through the house. You could tell that they, they had done it where the soil wasn't perfectly flat, unless of course that was some type of a monster. That's another video that will have to be made in the future. And of course, not around Halloween.